Dear friends, thank you for joining us. As more time passes, I'm beginning to hear how this pandemic has deeply impacted some of our church people and their family members. Somehow, I had thought that everyone I knew would be okay since we live in this gray Bruce County. But even in this minute I'm preaching to you, I'm aware of some people who are fighting for their life. I would humbly ask your prayer for them. More than ever, we need to pray for each other and say to each other, how are you doing today? And more than ever, we need to respond to each other truthfully and honestly. Usually when we say, how are you? We don't expect people to respond to us more than five seconds. But today, we really need to spend more than five seconds to share how we're doing and listen to others. I believe we can lift each other's spirit with our prayer and our presence. May we have a moment of prayer. Loving God, we gather in your presence. In this time of listening, we come to you with longing for each other's presence and your blessing. As we avoid each other to ensure the safety of others, we recognize there is a struggle within our heart. May your healing presence dwell in our heart. Also, we remember many whose lives are deeply impacted by COVID-19 virus. We pray for your healing, courage, and strength upon them. In your name we pray. Amen. Today and the next Sunday, we're going to look at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses from 13 to 35. This week, we'll be paying attention to the ways we can invite Jesus Christ into our life, from the verse 13 to 27. And the next Sunday, we will look at the ways that Jesus invites us to celebrate the love of God with Him, from the verse 28 to 35. There are five points in today's sermon. First, Jesus comes to us when we talk to each other with an open heart. Number two, Jesus walks along with us. Third, sometimes Jesus becomes a stranger in our life. Fourth, Jesus asks us questions. Fifth, stop talking, let Jesus speak to you. First, Jesus comes to us when we talk to each other with an open heart. I'm going to read verses from 13 to 15. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. In the text, Jesus comes to two disciples who are talking with each other about everything that had happened. One of many ways we can invite and experience the reason Christ in our life is by talking with each other. Yet I think it is important to remember that these two were having a dialogue, not a monologue. They were talking to each other, allowing each other to talk and listen not just one doing all the talking. 
and they were not having a lengthy theological, philosophical debate, but an honest and caring conversation about their life and their faith. They talked about everything that had happened, meaning they were not defending themselves from each other, but they invited others to hear their questions and struggles. We all know how powerful it is to talk about our life, our joys and struggles, with people who deeply care about us. We know how powerful it is to pray together with ones we love and respect. And it does not have to be a long conversation, whether it is a quick phone call or a short email, a kind and caring word help us to experience God in our life. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 4 Gentle words bring life and health. A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Chapter 16 verse 24 Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. The scriptures remind us we can help each other to invite and experience God with our kind and compassionate words. But unfortunately, we can also make others feel God is not with them with our human words. We all have experienced how destructive, painful, hurtful our human words can be. I know what people say often reflect their own life issues and who they are, but nonetheless, it's not easy to get over hurtful words we hear. The book of James knew how destructive people's hurtful words to their faith community. Chapter 3 verses from 5 to 6. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Dr. Rick Hansen wrote something very useful for us to remember. The brain is like Velcro for negative experiences, but Teflon for positive ones. Negative thoughts stick to us a lot easier and a lot longer. Unfortunately, I agree with Dr. Hansen that the negative and hurtful words tend to stay with us a lot easier and a lot longer. The question is always about what do we do? What do we do with the hurtful words we heard and we hear? I don't know if there is any easy answer I can offer to anyone. We need forgiveness, but we also need to speak truth. We need healing, but we also need to spend time less with those who are hurtful and more with those who love us. We need to pray, but also we need to do the things that remind us we are loved and we are alive. I wish I had an answer to why people say what they say sometime, but I know this much. When we are surrounded by those who are willing to speak truth in love and those who speak kindly, it becomes that much easier for us and for our community to invite and experience God. 
Second, Jesus walks along with us. The verse 15, as he talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Jesus comes to us and he walks along with us. That's the kind of God we believe. God who walks along with us. He comes into our life to accompany us. He doesn't come into our life demanding our attention. He comes to offer friendship and to accompany us. Just like how he entered Jerusalem by riding on a donkey. He comes to us in humility. Just like how Jesus identifies himself in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. For I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. Jesus comes to us in gentleness and humility. Offer us peace. God does not come to us as an earthly king. He does not come to us to rule or to take advantage of us. He comes to offer friendship and peace. And Jesus is inviting us to do the same, to offer our gentleness and humility with each other. Third, sometimes Jesus becomes a stranger in our life. I'm going to read verses 15 and 16. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. Here is a problem. Because God comes to us so gently and humbly. Because he does not demand our attention. We don't always recognize God in our life. In this particular story, these two disciples could not recognize Jesus because they were busy talking about him, what happened to him, what happened to them with him. And the scripture want us to remember that there is a difference between talking about God and talking to, talking with God. And the scripture encourages our faith to move from talking about God to talking with God. It means we're encouraged stop speculating about God, but start experiencing God. I'm going to read the verse 18. One of them named Cleopas asked Jesus, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem? Do not know the things that have happened there in these days? That's what happens when we don't recognize Jesus in our life. We allow him to become a stranger to us. We say to him, Who are you? What are you doing here? Why are you here? So the question becomes, what can we do to make sure God does not become a stranger in our life? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. There are times we need to stop speculating and talking about what is possibly waiting on the top of the staircase and have courage to take the first step. Just like anything else, 
whether learning how to drive, how to swim, and how to write, or how to play an instrument. There are times we need to stop thinking about doing them and just do them. Our relationship with God is the same. We cannot forever talk about God. We need to start spending time with God. Whether it means we spend an hour in prayer or reading the Bible, whether spending time in singing or listening or painting or dancing, or whether spending time with your family in gardening, enjoying God's creation. Whatever that can help you celebrate God in our life, we need to do them. Fourth, Jesus asks us questions. I'm going to read verse 17 and 19. Jesus asks them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? What things, he asked. When Jesus comes to us, he comes with questions. He offers us more questions. And it's not to test what we know and what we don't, but it's help us to understand who we are and who God is. And I don't think many of us like the part of God. We want an answer, not more questions in our life. In this particular story, we, as Jesus walks along with his two disciples, he asks them questions. He does not demand answers from us, but Jesus invites us to listen to his questions and deepen our questions of our faith and our life. We want to find a quick fix to our life, but Jesus wants us to live our life. We want to succeed and do well in our life, but Jesus wants us to grow and learn. We want to know what is going to happen tomorrow, but Jesus invites us to know who we are and who God is and how much God loves us. Fifth, the last point for today's sermon. Stop talking. Let Jesus speak to you. I'm going to read verse 27. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Isn't that a powerful testimony to us today, that Jesus would explain to us who God is and who we are to him, that he will show to us through every story in the Bible the story of Abraham, Moses, Isaiah, and David, and all the people in the Bible. And through every event and story in our human history, he will show us how much God loves us. Even today, although that's not how we feel about what's happening around us, Jesus is telling us the story of his unconditional love. So what can we do? So what are we supposed to do? We can stop talking, start listening to Jesus. We can start paying less attention to ourselves and more attention to the unconditional love of God. And we can spend hours what it means to stop talking and listening to God. I promise we'll do that one of these Sundays but for today, this is a good place for me to stop talking. Let 
God speak to you. May God bless you. Give you peace. Amen.